family and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Lauren McKinney and I love making videos about capsule wardrobing, slow fashion, and personal style. In the past several videos, I've been making kind of videos to help set us up for success in the new year. So a lot of the videos have been how to transform your wardrobe in 2022, what I'm decluttering in 2022, wardrobe investments for 2022, things like that. And so today I kind I want to make the last kind of kickoff video of the year for 2022 where since I've recently talked about pieces I'm parting with I want to talk about the most worn pieces in my wardrobe and use that as a lesson for future purchases if I need to make any we can learn a lot from our most worn pieces in our wardrobe and I'll be talking about some of the questions you can ask yourself in order to determine why those pieces are so well worn but before we get into it, I want to invite you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That would mean the whole world to me. It would make me so happy and bring a smile to my face for the new year, so please do that. Give this video a thumbs up if you like capsule wardrobing content and want to see more of it. And leave a comment below so that I know what your most worn piece in your wardrobe is. I'm really, really curious to see whether it's something more standout or something more basic or whatever it is. Let me know down below. One last thing, I know that many of you probably aren't following me on Instagram. And while I don't post a lot of photo content, I have been uploading a capsule wardrobing or personal style themed reel every single week for the past few weeks. So if you would like to see my reels and kind of a little bit more of the fun and creative side of personal style and even sometimes doing a fun, you know, music trend or reel trend or whatever, you can definitely follow me on Instagram to see those. I'll link my profile in the description box and put my handle on the screen. So let's go ahead and get into my most worn pieces and hopefully you can follow the same practice and figure out your most worn pieces and ask some of these questions or pinpoint these themes in order to find out why those pieces are so well worn and how those can inform your purchases in the future. So before we kind of go through each piece specifically, I want to to just observe everything that is here on the rack and ask myself a couple of questions. And what I really want to do is pinpoint some common themes in all of these pieces, including my shoes, which I'll show you. And I think that will help inform my future purchases. So looking just briefly as a whole, all of the pieces here, I can tell that in terms of basic colors, I've got a couple of black pieces, but a lot of my pieces are a beautiful ivory or a beige color. Even more so this kind of ivory and off-white is a color that shows up a lot in my most worn pieces. That's something to keep in mind. Maybe I just tend to gravitate towards warmer whites than I do bright whites. So now that we've pinpointed what the basic colors are, let's look at the more standout colors. I have pinks and blues because this is also in my most worn. So I can tell that I gravitate a lot towards pink and blue. That could be for a couple of reasons. One of those reasons could simply be that those are the colors that I have in my wardrobe. So why would I wear a color that's not in my wardrobe? But it can also confirm to me that my colors do get worn, which is a good thing to know because then I can buy more colors in the future. Another thing to ask yourself is what kinds of pieces are present? Is it mostly tops and bottoms, standout pieces, basic pieces, etc.? It looks like here that I have a couple of statement pieces. This is very much a statement. This is very much a statement. But the majority of my pieces are pieces that are layerable, pieces that are basics. I've got a lot of basic tops right here, and then I have pieces that go on top of those more basic pieces. That shows that I really value versatility and ease. The next thing I can ask myself is what kinds of materials are present. So let's just go down the line. Cotton, 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 cotton cotton, cotton, linen, cotton, cotton, cotton. And then this is wool. 
So it looks like I value cotton and a lot of these are in organic cotton. And I would say that's for a few reasons. One, cotton is easy to wash and dry. I value the ease of wear and the ease of care so, so much. So that means prioritizing fabrics that are easy to take care of over fabrics that are a little bit more difficult to take care of like wool, cashmere, and silk. That's not to say I don't have those pieces in my wardrobe, but there is a slight bias towards easier to wear and care fabrics, and that's an important lesson. And the last thing I wanna ask myself is, what is the theme in terms of ease, wearability, and comfort? All of these things on this rack are very comfortable. Let me say it again. All of the things on this rack are very comfortable. That, my friends, is so, so important to me. It shows me that I'm going to opt for a looser, less flattering jean than I am for a tight jean. One, because I work from home, and two, because these past few years have shown me how important comfort really, really is. This is comfortable, all of these things are comfortable, and the only kind of quintessentially uncomfortable thing here, jeans are very comfortable. Let's look at my shoes. Comfortable, comfortable. Not only that, but they're both slip on styles. That doesn't mean that I don't wear my other shoes at all. That means that I tend to opt for simpler, easier things. And that's just the truth. And I need to be okay with that. Even if I tried to make a conscious decision to not go with that or to choose less quote unquote comfortable shoes, the truth is, is that I tend towards slip on silhouettes that are easy to walk around in and really comfortable. I think that identifying the common themes in your most worn items is probably the most important part of this entire process because it's the common themes that let you know what you need to purchase next if you do need to make another purchase. It can help inform your wish list. It can help inform your declutters. In fact, I would advise going through and pulling out your most worn things before you even begin the decluttering process because then you know what is really important to you. What do you really, really value? Clearly, all of my items tend to have common themes and that's something I'm making a mental note of so I can use it as I progress in my wardrobe for 2022. So now that we've talked about the common themes, let's just go through each of the pieces just for the sake of showing you and giving you some styling options. So let's actually start here at the end with the only dress of the group. This is my beautiful floral Doen dress. This dress is probably like a star on my YouTube channel because I wear it so, so much, not only online, but just at home. It makes me feel all sorts of ways. Whimsical, beautiful, like a princess, like a prairie girl, just romantic and lovely. And I like romanticizing that little part of my life that is waking up and getting ready. And even if, you know, I'm going to my desk and starting to write or work, this dress makes it feel a little bit more special. And I really love that about it. The next piece is very similar in color. You see, this was a big color in my, um, winter capsule and I will say that these are across all of my capsules my all year basics and both of my seasonal capsules cool winter and warm sorry cool weather and warm weather capsules um because I felt like that would give me the best kind of general overview of what's going on so this was in my fall winter capsule my cool weather capsule and I was tempted to wear this as soon as I purchased it which was at the end of the summer and honestly I did um but it does make a good addition to my fall winter capsule because the sleeves are slightly longer it's also a thicker and tighter fabric so if I were to wear it in the summer summer like you would see like a lot of sweat on it and I don't have to worry about that as much in the winter time it's a great layering piece the fabric is also a little bit heavier and it's just a beautiful basic with a little something special it has these beautiful buttons in the front and then it's also this beautiful color it feels very mm, I don't know very chic and it's tight so I can pair it with like a looser bottom uh, which also makes for a really really nice look so I am I like this shirt a lot clearly because it's in my most worn list 
Next are two turtlenecks. Now this has been the star of the show during the fall and winter for several years and this um, was a very recent addition. I got this at the end of 2021, but I could already tell that it was, I mean, I've put a lot, a lot of wear on it um, because I'm gravitating towards lighter col colors and lower contrast looks. So I've actually been opting for this turtleneck more than I have for this turtleneck. And so this definitely deserves to be on this list for that reason. Both very comfortable and easy to wear. And this one I got secondhand. It's from Everlane. This is from um, a brand called Four Better Days. They're like a closed loop clothing brand, which I find very, very cool. Next is my trusty black tee. I like wearing a black tee more than I like wearing a white tee. I find that it looks slightly classier. The fabric is is easier to style. It looks less dingy less often. I've had this black t-shirt from Everlane for probably three years and it is still going strong. I mean, no pilling, no fading. I don't know what they put in this t-shirt, but it is it's lasting. And then the last top is the one that I'm wearing and this is the only sweater in the group. This is a little bit of a standout piece and it is the number one sweater in my fall winter capsule that I opt for. It's because of a couple of reasons. It's not necessarily easy to wear. I mean, it is because like I can wear an undershirt underneath it, but I do take care to not sweat in it or unless I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath it because I hand wash all of my sweaters and Anyways, I just try to keep it clean as most as I can. But the truth is, is that when I do opt for a sweater, I opt for this one. It has beautiful thick cuffs and a beautiful thick collar that is great for wearing on its own and it's also great for layering. It's in this beautiful blue color that I like and the pattern is not only eye-catching, but it also has a beautiful vintage, almost 70s sensibility to it and I really dig that in my pieces. This wouldn't be a fair video if I didn't acknowledge the importance importance of loungewear for me this past year. And while I've been trying to get dressed in the morning more, there are some days, um, particularly like Thursdays where it's like the end of the week and I can just barely take it, um, that I opt to wear loungewear. And in order to feel put together, I've invested in a couple, and by couple, I actually mean a couple, two, um, loungewear sets that are matching and one of them gets more wear than the other and it is this gorgeous one from Everlane so it's this really pretty like ivory loungewear set and I feel both super comfortable and really put together when I wear this and my favorite thing to do is to wear this with some gold jewelry and some fun socks maybe they're like a little bit more formal socks like the nicer socks in your drawer not the ones that have holes in them or the ones that are super stained or anything like that um, and I really really have valued this little set uh, this past year so this even though it's not in one of my like capsule capsules it's in like my loungewear slash activewear capsule it still deserved to get some airtime because it helped a lot. For the two pants, I have my pair of linen pants, which I wore so, so much. And I believe that the last pair of pants that I added that have an elasticated waistband are going to get just as much wear because these got a lot of wear for that exact reason. And these pair of jeans are probably the least quintessentially flattering pair of jeans that I have. I don't love that word because truly, you know, what you feel good in is like what is flattering for you. So like, you know, a lot of people have like objective opinions about what flattering means, but that's silly. Whatever makes you feel good, that's what matters. And these make me feel like pretty casual and chill and they're just a good weekend jean and because they are more comfortable than my other ones they are the jeans that I have tended towards more than my other ones and that's just because they're comfy and they're kind of cool and I feel like I can add some stuff to dress them up or make them look nicer so they're versatile too. The next two pieces are recent more recent additions in the past couple of months but I've already worn them so much because I've truly found the power of third pieces this past year. There's so much power in layering on a jacket, layering on a cardigan, 
adding a hat, adding just a third piece that makes your outfit feel put together. And I know that's kind of like a fashion rule that a lot of people abide by. And I think that there is quite a bit of credibility to it. It is true that adding a third standout piece can oftentimes make the outfit feel more complete. And I find that these pieces do it. I got rid of my more basic denim jacket. I went something for a little bit longer, a little bit more feminine and vintage feeling. Also, this has a little bit more stretch, so it's comfortable. It hits my body in a better place and it is extremely versatile. This is the chore style jacket from Cezanne. I think it's called the Will Jacket. It doesn't say, but this is the Will Jacket, I think in the size medium, and it's in their dark indigo color. Last clothing item that I have to share, which I promise you, I don't store like this on the hanger because it will like leave weird bumps in the shoulders just for this video. But this is a cardigan that I got um, from a little boutique in Salt Lake City. It is, really just super comfy. And the great thing about this is that not only does it keep me comfortable at home if I want to wear it with a comfy pair of jeans or if I want to wear it with a skirt or a t-shirt, but it also serves as a top, you know, as its own right. You can tuck this into a skirt or something like that and make it into make it into a top for itself. So it's both a good sweater type top and a good layering piece. Also, I love this like cable knit. It feels very homemade. It feels very vintage and it just feels cozy and a little bit cottage core, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I kind of like to lean into that a little bit. All right, so now let's finish up by talking about shoes and accessories. So I've already shown these two shoes, but I'll just talk about them briefly in detail. My first pair of most worn shoes are my Birkenstocks. These are oiled leather in tobacco, I believe that's the name. I just wear these pretty much every day. I mean, like, even if it's colder outside, if I need to take Remy on a walk, I'll put them on with some socks and walk around the block. I know that's not very fashion forward, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I keep them by the door, so whenever I have to take Remy out to go to the bathroom, I just slip them on. But during the summertime, they are my go-to shoe. I wear them with this dress sometimes at the beginning of the fall season, especially when you live in a more temperate climate like I do in Southern California. Having a pair of slip-on on sandals is just so so great and truly I feel like this pair of clogs from Lotta from Lotta of Stockholm Lotta from Stockholm that's what they're called is really kind of similar in idea for the Birkenstocks they're like a harder sole shoe with cushion on the bottom they're slip on and they're just like I don't know European feeling if that makes any sense so these I love because they add a little bit of height to whatever outfit I feel like I can dress them up and dress them down although clogs do tend to stay pretty casual which is fine most of my outfits are casual ish anyways and I just really like the kind of fun kind of I don't know character 70s feeling that they bring to my looks and it's like a short enough heel to where it's comfortable but it just adds like I said a little bit of height just to give me a little lift so I can wear them with shorts and I can wear them with pants and I love that and then the last most worn piece is just these little earrings that I'm wearing today these are the dome hoops from Majuri I'll take them off actually and show them to you up close I love these because they're just so, so easy. And you know, like you can't go wrong with like a good little bold hoop. So easy to wear. These were like my first more expensive, not even that they're that expensive, earring purchase. Um, when I first got my ears pierced two and a half years ago, I have since had a pair where one of the posts like the earring post broke off, but it was within two years of my purchase and Majuri has a two year warranty. So I reached out to them and they sent me a new pair for free, which is really, really great. Um, so far these haven't tarnished or anything. And I have other Majuri earrings that I've had for almost three years that are so doing so, so well. So I really have enjoyed, you know, purchasing from that brand and will probably purchase from them in the future. But these are just like a good go-to earring for every day. They're comfortable to wear for a long time so you don't well wear down your earlobes and they also just add like 
something special without feeling like you're trying too hard. They feel very effortless. All right, so those are all of my most worn pieces in my wardrobe for 2021. And I'm using those to help influence my wish list, my declutter, my everything for 2022. There's so, so much that you can learn from the most worn pieces in your wardrobe. So I really want to encourage you to try out this practice for yourself. Go through your most worn pieces and ask yourself a couple of questions to identify the common themes. What are the common fabrics? What are the common basic colors? What are the common standout colors? And what is the kind of average theme of ease, wearability, and comfort? If you can answer those questions, then you can help determine what kinds of purchases you need to make in the future and just what kind of clothes you like to wear in general. It helps us get even closer to identifying what our personal style is. So if you found this video helpful today and want to give this a shot yourself, please, please subscribe down below. Like I said, it would mean the world to me. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what your most worn piece in your wardrobe is. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to see reels like this or you want to see reels like this. I'm really trying my hand at them and I have a lot of fun making them, especially playing around with like trending sounds and stuff like that. So really excited to keep doing that on a weekly basis and maybe eventually bi-weekly. And by bi-weekly, I mean twice a week because it can mean both twice a week and every other week. <sighs> Anyways, follow me over on Instagram. That would be so fab. I also post a lot of pictures of my dog and a lot of pictures on my stories. Sometimes they're funny. At least I think so. All right, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend this time with you. As always, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have a great week. Bye.